Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video on a fighting fantasy book game thing. We've done one video on this sort of thing before, just one. Of all the videos I've done in uh, the history of this channel, I've only dared do one on a book game. And I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I'm trying to up the quality of it a bit this time um, from that one because that one, I, there was a lot to be done. There's a camera here, there's a camera on the book. Um, I didn't have the microphone going last time. I think maybe I'll be able to improve the quality a little bit with this. But the thing is, there's so many different things going on now. I really hope that it's all working. Because I won't know until it's all done. I can test it a million times, but every time I test it, I've got to restart the process. So, that's enough rambling about that crap that no one cares about. Today we're doing the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. This is the one you all voted for. Uh, many people, I was surprised pleasantly surprised at how many people were interested in the fighting fantasy books last time um especially long-term viewers of the channel I, I didn't realize how many of you would be interested in it but a lot of people said oh now do this book it's like i don't have that one so i showed you all the books i did have this was the one that won in the voting poll but because uh zobster um has offered to do me a favor for something i thought i'll do him a favor back i'll try and get hold of the book he's requested and i've succeeded space assassin i believe that's the one you wanted mate i managed to get hold of it if this video does okay today then maybe we'll make that the very next one because this is this is different also before we get on with the actual book and start everything up i want to say something i find quite interesting this i got lucky this is a first edition book and i will show you it in the other camera proof of things here see i'm happening the same time as this one we'll see the uh dice to be used throughout and obviously this is just to show the space assassin book but the warlock of firetop mountain book is not first edition the first edition ones were made by well published not made but published by puffin books i believe and these ones are i forget what is it it's like Wizarding or some crap. Hang on. Wizard books. Bloody close. I have pretty much wizard books only aside from that Space Assassin one. And I love the artwork here. I think it's fucking brilliant. That dragon looks so cool. It looks so cool. And the artwork throughout the book, throughout these type of books, the wizard ones, is just great. I think it's fantastic. They're not the recent ones. The uh, newest ones... Let me check who they're published by, because I forget the name of these guys, can't remember at all. Livingstone? No, Scholistic... Scholistic Children's Books. I hate these ones, because... Look at the artwork difference. Alright, look at this. It's yellow! It's crap. Also, the book feels crap, like, really weak. But I will say, one thing I do like is the artwork. The art panels within this book. They're pretty cool. I can't deny that. Here's a comparison I'll do later on from different vantage points and stuff. So, this is my son's one. Uh, he's treated it like crap. What do you expect? He's 10. So, we're not reading from that. We're reading from this proper one today. So, things that I'm improving. One, I didn't like how I did the adventure sheet last time. The camera couldn't focus on that well and the book. So, I was having to piss around with lighting and the editing. Today, we're going to use this. An adventure sheet, a proper one. I'm going to try and fill it out properly as we go, uh, to the best of my abilities. Now, I've only played this a total of once, and already it's got some things which are different to it In uh, uh, from the last book we did, Temple of Doom. Like, provisions is used differently. Uh, certain items, I think, is used differently. It's This is meant to be an easier one, but it's still a case of there's one correct path. <laughs> one and yeah we're unlikely to get it so don't expect me to beat the book that doesn't sound right win yeah don't expect me to do that but we're gonna have fun trying to get the adventure going so that's the basic plan here also to try and improve things because last time i was reading and i was reading the book like out here you can't really tell but my arm my arms are stretched right out so if, have you ever tried reading the book like that you ever tried it it's hard it's very difficult. So this time I'm going to do myself a favor. I'm just going to read the book good and close. And whenever there's a picture, then I will bring back that visual there. 
I think that's the best thing to do because I can read so much easier. And it's no good if I have to keep stopping and going, what, what's that say? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll try and do stuff a bit better this time. So, I think I've covered all the pony. Now we'll go through the very start of the book, which explains the rules and shit. So, bring up the adventure sheet for you, which we will fill out as we go. And we've got the dice. Put them there so they're easy to grasp. I think I've covered everything. I think I have. Oh, no. Last time I made a balls up because I was drinking alcohol. And um, was, that didn't affect me when playing the thing and doing the video. It made my speech a bit orange and tacky. So this time, water. Huzzah. Yeah, I know. But water from a Sega head cup. How cool is that? Yeah. Don't buy them. I'm not even going to tell you where to get one because, honestly, I think these people are rip-off merchants. It's good quality product. They're asking too much. If you know where to get this, please don't tell people in the comments. I don't want anyone burning their money like that. I don't, I don't give a fuck if it is my thing. So. Mm. Water. That's, that's great. Yeah. Right. Now then, to the rules. Let's zoom this. Oh. I'll get myself comfy to breathe properly. For Joanna, a true Gal Galadriel. I can't even read the first thing. And for my mum, Aneka, without whom this book would not have been possible. And that's by Stephen Ian, the people that wrote it. How to fight creatures in the underworld. We, I know how to do this, but we've got to sort out the adventure sheet properly. So, first one is skill. Are you going to stay there for me? No, you're not. Roll one dice, or die. I know some people hate me calling it dice, alright? I'm British, and I'm getting old, and I'm calling it a fucking dice. Oh, and last time someone complained that I used a 12-sided dice, a D12. Not the band. I say band. Bunch of rappers. They complained. They said, that's not doing it right. It's like, does it make a difference between using a D12 and D6? I'm sure someone will go mad at me, but no, I don't know. So, fuck it. I've got two sixes. I'm trying to please everyone. Okay, give me a break. Roll one. Add six. This is the number. Roll one. I need to lean to see. Three. I suppose that's half good, isn't it? Add six. We eat nine. So, my initial skill is nine then. Yes, making sure that isn't right. Show it. Nine. Nine. That's a terrible looking nine. <laughs> Trying to write on, would you believe it, Windows Paint. Give me a break, all right? I'm trying my best here. It's just that stuff doesn't always work. Which is a massive shock horror. Next one. Stamina. Roll both dice, add 12. Oh, okay. Give me luck. <laughs> I said luck, you bastard. Five. I hate you so much. So that's 17, isn't it? Yeah. Make sure add 12. Add five and five. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good at all. Luck, roll one dice, add six. That's the same as the last one. Are you ready for a laugh? Are you? Alright, okay. Well. Well. I'll have to not take too many risks in this playthrough. Hey, Jesus. Right, now that we've done that, I believe it's equipment. So give me a second. Okay, so you start with 10 provisions. The provisions in the last book, I think you could use them anywhere to heal yourself for like four points or something. Doesn't work like that in this book. In this book, you can only use the provisions when the book tells you no other time so that's fun isn't it imagine playing a pokemon game and you can't heal with potions you can only heal via poker center you gotta to go to a specific place to heal that's kind of it i guess um the good thing is we also get an additional potion you can have one for skill one for stamina or one for luck i'm gonna take what is called a potion of strength um which restores stamina points because I can see the need for healing more than the need for any other crap. So we'll just go one eh. strength. You can you can read that right? S T R 
that's as good as it gets that's brilliant that is absolutely brilliant i'm so good with windows fucking paint <laughs> which i haven't used in so long the layout's completely different so i don't know where anything is yeah here we are hints on play there is only one true way through the warlock's dungeon and it will probably take you several attempts to find it no it fucking won't I'm gonna do it once or nuns make notes draw a map if you explore as you explore this map will be useful in future adventures and help you to identify unexplored sections of the dungeon. Not all rooms contain treasure. Many merely contain traps and creatures which you will no doubt fall foul of. Several keys are to be found in dungeon rooms. Only by, only by arriving at the Warlock's treasure with the correct keys... Ugh, if we even get that far, right? Will you open his chest and get to his treasure? The one true way involves a minimum of risk and any player no matter how weak on initial dice rolls should be able to get through fairly easily hmm minimum of risk so last time i didn't take enough risk and it backfired this time i really should try and avoid taking too much risk okay 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 Shit springs to mind. Right, that's the adventure sheet done, except for gold, I believe. i got to find out if we have any gold to begin with or not. Uh, apparently, the potion of strength, the one for stamina, can be used twice, so I need to remember that. Uh, I've written the equipment list. I apologize for the handwriting. I'm trying to do it with a mouse, because whenever I type on Windows Paint, it seems to affect the recording of the audio. I don't know why. There must be something to do with a fucking keyboard. It's messing it all up. So... Yeah, we'll have to make do with it looking like a toddler did it. Don't be surprised. Oh, look, you're not. Right, I've had a look through the uh, whole thing, and I can't find anything about gold. So maybe we accumulate gold later, but call me thick. If it says you start with this amount, I can't see it. You wouldn't blame me for being thick. But anyway, we are going ahead now. This is it. Sorry for all of the uh, cutting and planning. I'm trying to do it absolutely right. Trying trying plus having everything set up is a pain in the ass so here we go ready only a foolhardy adventurer would embark upon such a perilous quest without first finding out as much as possible about the mountain and its treasures before your arrival at the foot of firetop mountain you spent several days with the town folk of a local village some two days journey from the base being a likable sort of person you found it easy to get on with the local peasants Although they told you many stories about the mysterious Warlock Sanctuary, you could not feel sure that all, or indeed any, of these were based on fact. The villagers had seen many adventurers pass through on their way to the mountain, but very few ever returned. The journey ahead was extremely dangerous. That you knew for certain. Of those who returned to the village, none contemplated going back to Firetop Mountain. There seemed to be some truth in the rumour that the Warlock's treasure was stored in a magnificent chest with two locks, and the keys to these locks were guarded by various creatures within the dungeons. The Warlock himself was a sorcerer of great power. Some described him as old, others as young. Some said his power came from an enchanted deck of cards, others from the silky black gloves that he wore. The entrance to the mountain was guarded by a pack of warty-faced goblins. Stupid creatures, fond of their food and drink. Towards the inner chambers, the creatures became more fearsome. To reach the inner chambers, you would have to cross a river. The ferry service was regular, but the ferryman enjoyed a good barter. So you should save a gold piece for the trip. The locals also encouraged you to keep a good map of your wanderings, for without a map, you would end up hopelessly lost within the mountain. When it finally came to your day of leaving, the whole village turned out to wish you a safe journey. Tears came to the eyes of many of the women, young and old alike. You couldn't help wondering whether they were tears of sorrow, shed by eyes which would never see you alive again. At last, your two-day hike is over. You unsheathe your sword, lay it on the ground, and sigh with relief as you lower yourself down onto the mossy rocks to sit for a moment's rest. You stretch, rub your eyes, and finally look up at Firetop Mountain. 
The very mountain itself looks menacing. The steep face in front of you looks to have been savaged by the claws of some gargantuan beast. Sharp, rocky crags jut out at unnatural angles. At the top of the mountain, you can see the eerie red colouring, probably some strange vegetation, which has given the mountain its name. Perhaps no one will ever know exactly what grows up there, as climbing the peak must surely be impossible. Your quest lies ahead of you. Across the clearing is a dark cave entrance. You pick up your sword, get to your feet, and consider what dangers may lie ahead of you. But with determination, you thrust the sword home into its scabbard and approach the cave. You peer into the gloom to see dark, slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. You light your lantern and step warily into the blackness. Cobwebs brush your face and you hear the scurrying of tiny feet. Rats, most likely. You set off into the cave. After a few yards, you arrive at a junction. Will you turn west or east? East. Always to the east. Five points if you can guess what that game's from. The passageway soon comes to an end at a locked wooden door. You listen at the door, but hear nothing. Will you try to charge the door down? If so, turn to 156. If you would rather turn around and go back to the junction, Turn to 92. Hmm. I know I'm not supposed to take any risk. Apparently, according to the start of the book. But I didn't hear any sounds. 156. Yep. From one wall lighting up a small armory room stocked with swords, shields, helmets, daggers, breastplates, and the like. You examine the weaponry and find nothing appearing superior to your own sword, bugger. However, a circular iron shield with a golden crescent at its center catches your eye. You pick it up and feel its weight on your arm. If you wish to take this shield, it will aid you in battles by helping to fend off wound damage inflicted by a creature on you. If, in future during a battle in which you are using the shield, a creature wounds you, you may throw one dice. If you throw a six, the creature inflicts only one point of damage instead of the normal two. If for some reason the creature would normally only inflict one point of damage, then a successful roll of six would mean that no damage is done. However, the shield is heavy and you will have to leave behind one item of equipment. Right, I think I should take this. Um. So I got to adjust something. In my equipment list, I have sword, shield, leather armor, the backpack that containing prov provisions. I wasn't sure whether to add that or not, because you've got the provisions remaining listed as a separate thing. But I've written backpack anyway, just in case. And you've got the lantern. There's no fucking way I'm leaving the lantern behind. Uh, well, I'm getting a shield, so I suppose I could leave behind the other shield. So if I just, rather than rewrite that, put... N enchanted You can read that right. That's readable. Whatever. I've 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 got shield. I've got enchanted shield. I've done away with the old original one, we've got the enchanted one. I really hope this doesn't come back uh, come back to bite me in the ass. So now continuing to 300. On the east wall of the passage, you see another door. This time made of solid metal. Listening at the door, you hear the sound of tortured screams coming from within. If you wish to try opening the door, turn to 102. If you decide to ignore this room and continue up the corridor, turn to 303. Last time, I didn't take enough risks. This time, I'm not told I'm told not to take risks, but I took a risk then, and I got an enchanted shield. I'm going to try and open the door. The door is not locked and opens, the room in front of you to be a small torture chamber with various torture devices around the walls. In the center of the room, two small hunchbacked creatures are having their fiendish way with a dwarf who is tied to a hook in the ceiling by his wrists. The two hunchbacks are poking and cutting him viciously with their swords. The dwarf lets out a final scream and falls silent. Eyes closed. His captors make disappointed noises and look round angrily at you, as if you were the fault that the dwarf has collapsed. You must act quickly 
Will you close the door quickly and continue up the corridor? Draw your sword and try to fight the creatures. Stride over to the dwarf, give him a jab with your sword, and put on an evil laugh for the torturers. Jay, let me think. You arrive at the end of the passage, where it meets another, going east and west. But an iron port... portculus... portculus? Portculus? Portculus. I, I don't know what that is. I'm guessing it's that gate there, though. Whatever. An iron portculus blocks your way, and no amount of charging it is going to budge it. On the wall to your right are two levers, and it seems likely that these levers have something to do with raising the portculus. Portculus? Do you wish to pull the right lever, or the left? I got a 50-50 chance, I'm not very good at them. Uh, if I had a coin, I would flip it. But I don't. Go with the first option. Right. Hello, 128. I'm worried now. I'm really worried. Ah, here we are. You hear a deep rumbling noise, and the ground begins to shudder. Ugh. Slowly and noisily, the portcullis rises into the ceiling. You may now walk to the junction. Will you turn west or east? East. Always to the east. Cautiously, you creep along the passageway. After a short time, it turns sharply to the north. At the corner there is a bench of solid wood, and above the bench a sign reads, Rest ye here, weary traveller. Here you may stop and eat provisions if you wish. Oh, well, so if I had fought them, I guess I could have um, stopped there and healed up. That's it if I had lived and if I would be able to heal enough, because it did say two goblin buggers, and you think, yeah, while I'm eager for a battle, because we not to put any spoilers, but they didn't go too well for battles last time, did it? Um, two things at the same time sounds a bit stupid. So, let's not have that happen, shall we? Minimum risk. I, I got to start paying attention to that minimum risk thing. So, let's see. Uh, here you may stop any provisions if you wish, turn to 15, or continue. So we're going to continue. You arrive at another junction in the passageway. If you would like to turn westwards, turn to 235. If you wish to go east, turn to 323. I've been taking east a lot, and I'm starting to worry that I'm going to go in a sodding great circle. Should I try going west? I think we're going to try going west. You follow the passage westwards. Then it turns sharply to the north, and some meters further on, a passage runs off to the west. If you would like to go along the westward passage, turn to 176. If you want to carry on northwards up the passage, turn to 5. North. Maybe we should go north. This is starting to get a bit where the fuck am I going now sort of thing. A rough timber doorway is on the east wall of the passage. You listen at the door and can hear a jolly sort of humming sound. Do you want to knock on the door and go in, or will you continue northwards? Humming sound. But jolly? You say humming, you make me think giant bug monster. But jolly? Uh. Should we knock on the door? I think I think I'm gonna be stupid and knock on the damn door. Oh, and hello. Look, look, there we are. Look at that for artwork. I wonder what that looks like in the latest edition book. That's the thing, like, I could keep comparing all of the images, but I'd be here all day doing it. Maybe I will, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how I feel on that one. Anyway, back to it. So, jolly humming. It's an old man in a chair. Right, well, there you go. Let's carry on, see what happens. A voice bids you, come in. And you walk into a small room furnished with a table and chair, shelves, cupboards, and the like, all of which have seen better days. Plates, bowls, cups, and hundreds of old books line the shelves. In the midst of all this clutter, you see a little old man in a grubby white gown, swaying to and fro in a rocking chair, still humming happily to himself, his eyes fixed on you, but seeming at peace with the world, he bids you, Good day! Do you start to make a conversation with him, draw your sword and charge him, decide not to waste time with him and leave going northwards? It's absolutely pointless leaving, I feel. Draw the sword. I feel like that would be retarded. Because, like, some of the uh, townsfolk said, oh, I've seen the warlock, he's an old man. 
I'm going to start a conversation with him. As you speak, the old man rises to his feet. Oh my, oh my, a stranger, he starts. Well, do come in. The shop is open, but what can I get you? What would you like to buy? What takes your fancy? Which way are you headed? North? Well, you tell the old man your story. He listens intently and replies, Oh yes, in that case you undoubtedly need one of my blue candles. That will be twenty gold pieces, please. Cash, if you don't mind. Yes, I know it's expensive, but isn't everything these days? Not so long ago, these were only five gold pieces each. But you know what has happened to the price of candle wax since the long dark night? Oh, but you probably don't, since you don't come from these parts. Never mind, I can guarantee it's still worth the price. You might need it sooner than you think. If you decide to buy a candle, pay for it and add it to your equipment list. You are getting a little tired of his constant prattling. Leave the room and go towards... and go... Mm. Leave the room and go northwards. Turn to 292. Well, you know what? I was so confused by the goal thing. I even read through this one on all of its setting up the game. There's nothing about gold. So, neither of these say if you start off with any gold. So, I can only assume you don't. So, I have no way of buying this thing. So, I can only assume that a different route would have taken me somewhere where I could have got gold. So... Again, if you're saying I'm an idiot, you start with so much gold. Like, well, it doesn't bloody say it here. And if it does, it says it in a place completely different to where it says about all the other equipment. So I can't believe they would be that stupid with setting it up. So I can't buy this poxy candle, is what I'm saying. So that's fun, isn't it? Moving on. Northwards, the passageway ends at a solid wooden door. You listen at the door, but can hear nothing. There appears to be no choice but to open the door and enter the room. Which you do. It's a large, square room. You flash your lantern around the room and catch a quick glimpse of its emptiness. Although there are murals on the wall, before your lantern suddenly goes out, you try to relight it, but it will not catch. In the blackness, you hear a succession of frightful noises. Howls. Screams. Cries and wails are getting louder and louder until they reach the pitch where you must cover your ears. Do you have a blue candle? No, I don't have a fucking blue candle. The ear-piercing sound gets louder and louder. The pain is unbearable. Reduce your skill by... S oh, I gotta reduce my skill. That's a bummer. Okay, reduce it by one. So that's now an eight. Ba-dump. You begin to grope in the dark for a wall. Do you head for the west wall, the north wall, the east wall? Part of me wants to keep going east because that's when everything was going well for us, but since going north, I feel like I feel like we have to go north. Sod it, we're going north. You grope around the length of the wall and find a door. Quickly, you fumble with the handle. It opens. You enter another small room, bare except for a fountain in the middle. Not a particularly grand affair, the fountain is a small carved fish, and a short jet of water comes from its mouth. A wooden sign hangs from the fish, and this bears a message. It is written in goblin tongue, at which you are not very proficient. The first word you cannot understand, but the others read, Not drink. But you are extremely thirsty. Will you drink from the fountain? No! <laughs> No! That's, that's like saying, warning, acid. Oh, I'm thirsty. I'm not drinking the bloody thing. That's, that's stupid. Otherwise, you can pass it by and leave through a door in the north wall. Oh, so there's another door in here. Okay, cool. The door opens into a passage which you follow northwards. Shortly, you reach a bend and follow it round to the east. Several meters on, you reach a junction at which you may either go north or continue eastwards. The passage twists and turns and eventually ends in a solid iron door. You listen, but hear nothing. You can try to open the door, or you can go back to the junction. I think I'm going to try and open the door because I'm an idiot. Yeah. Oh, hello. Look at that for a picture. Ah, I think I've got another 50-50 choice. I'm in trouble. I am in 
so much trouble. Okay. The room is unoccupied, and there seems to be no other means of exit. In the center of the floor stands a table, and on the table are two helmets, one of bronze and one of iron. Both are about your size. Will you try one on? Or is this worth the risk? Mm. I don't think it's worth the risk for a poxy helmet. I mean, it's very tempting. It's very tempting. But the book said minimal risk. And we're kind of getting by on the skin of our teeth at the moment. You know, we've only got to take one wrong turn and we're boned. Um, uh, no. No, we won't. We'll return to the junction. You arrive back at the junction, and this time turn northwards. Some way up the passage, you reach another junction, where you may either go eastwards or westwards. Jesus, this place is a maze, isn't it? Um, and the game, uh, the, yeah, the game, the book says at the start, make a map. Yeah, right. Be a right squiggly line. <sighs> I don't know where to go. Okay, right, here we are, and oh. I, I'm regretting the way I decided to go, because look at the picture there. That's, yeah, man bat, basically, giant bats, okay. The passageway twists and sharply northwards, uh, twists sharply northwards, and ahead you can hear water flowing. You eventually reach the south bank of an underground river. I was saying about a river earlier, whatever. As you stand on the pebbled bank, you hear a fluttering of wings and look up to see three giant bats. Three? Shit. Oh, fight these three as a single creature. Oh, thank fuck. <laughs> that could have gone. Yeah, right. Okay, giant bats. Their skill is six. Their stamina is six. So, first of all, I have to write that down. We've actually encountered a thing. Are you amazed? I am. Luckily, our skill is eight. It got knocked down a bit, but it's still higher than theirs. Now, because I haven't battled once in this thing. I'm just going to reacquaint myself with how this goes and then we'll zoom on to actually fight. Okay, first of all we have to roll two dice for the creature and then add its skill score. Right, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Battle time. Eight plus six. Okay, I gotta beat that. Jesus. Come on. Basically, I need to get anything higher than a six. That's not that. So I got hurt, which means I've just lost two points of health. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're not dead yet. Rubbish number. Yes. Right. Okay, so they've got now ten. I have to beat ten. Come on. Just as a total. All you've got to do is get anything higher than a two now. I can math. I can math. I've hit them. Bugger you, bats. Bugger you, bats. So they're now down to four, because they have much lower health than me to begin with. Dot for that. Right. Low number, low number, low number. Okay. That's what I need. Oof. Wish me luck. <laughs> yes, right, okay, high numbers. I'm not even going to bother screaming out the math. It's just, if it's an obvious one, then I'm just going to go for it, in case you hadn't noticed already. Right, I need. I just need to hit one more time, one more time, one more time. Low number. All that, mmm. Mmm, okay. Right. Right. I need to outdo their number. Their number was 13, I believe. Oh! Mine run away! Oh no! I'm not cheating, they got free. Uh, so they. Fuck. Right, okay, they got a hit in. Okay. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. 15. There's now 13. Come on! Low number now! Low number now! 
five. Okay, I gotta be uh, 11. I have to be 11 in total, so with the adding of eight, eight to that, I've killed him. The fucking bat's dead. Right. So he's dead. That's it. Eh. Eh. Bat. I killed, I killed bat. Look at that for writing. That's brilliant, that is. <sighs> okay. If you win, was there ever any doubt? Don't. Don't. Let me have this, all right? Let me have this. Turn to 344. You sheathe your sword and walk up to the water. Is it safe to swim? Although you cannot see any immediate signs of danger, either in the water or around its banks, there is no way through on the north side of the river. You suddenly notice a gleaming sword lying on the riverbed several steps in. You wade in to retrieve it. It is light in your hand and far less cumbersome than your own weapon. And it has a keen edge. This marvelous weapon will add one point to your skill whilst you use it. Note this on your equipment list. Note this on your equipment list. Okay, so I am now at nine for definitely skill. Yes, yeah, skill. Okay. That's Q. That's Q, that's Q. Nine. There. Nine. That makes me much more likely to win against other things. Sweet. Okay, cool. I'm happy. Finally, a bit of good luck. Although my health sucks, maybe we'll find a place where we can have damn provisions at some point. Uh, da -da 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 -da. A mysterious voice speaking directly to your mind seems to be telling you to throw your own sword in the river. Will you? Hmm. Is there any... Is there any downside to keeping both swords? Doesn't say you, if you keep it, you can't carry stuff. Hmm. Maybe I will keep sword. I'm go I'm gonna keep the sword because it says mysterious voice. It's like yeah, who the fuck are you? So yeah, 153. I will say I'm probably gonna jinx it now, but we're doing much better than we did last time. I probably jinxed it. As you put the two swords into your belt, your new one seems to take on a mind of its own. It cuts your leg! You bastard! Lose one stamina point, and as you draw it out, it turns rubbery in your hand. It's useless now, and you fling it in the river. Prick! Ha <laughs> <laughs> I- Luck? No luck. Fucking hell, that last- You! You swine! So my health is dropped by one. My stam- it doesn't say that my skill still goes- oh, no, wait, it says whilst I use it, so that would have gone down as well, wouldn't it? So now that's back to an eight. Yeah. You fucking cunt. It- <laughs> Well. Well, I hate everything. Simples. Okay, it's useless now, so you fling it into the river. It seems that the only way forward is for you to swim eastwards, down the river. You plunge in and start swimming. The current is strong and takes you swiftly downstream. You are washed along through a narrow opening and out into a large cavern with banks on both sides. The current washes you onto the south bank. You are on the south bank of an underground river facing across its black depths. There appear to be four ways of crossing. To your left, a rusted bell bears the sign. Ferry service, two gold pieces. I'm getting really annoyed now. I feel like I was supposed to start with gold, but I couldn't see it anywhere in the book. I feel like a, I feel like a fucking idiot. There was a small raft in front of you on the bank with a long stick resting beside it. You could punt across the river. A rickety old bridge crossing on the right. If you don't trust any of these, you may swim. Swimming sounds a bit deathy. The bridge sounds a bit deathy. I mean, it even says, it says here in the book, look, risk the bridge. Not take the bridge, risk the bridge. But the raft just says, punt the raft across. So I think I'm going to try the raft. Because I can't pay for the fucking Stubri service. Which I really feel stupid when it comes to money on this, but... I'm sure people are going to be screaming at me in the comments, but there's nothing I can do or see. God, if you know where in this book it says it, take a screenshot, tell me what page. You know, something, show me why I'm screwing up. 
you climb onto the raft and start to punt your way across the river. The going is not easy. In the middle of the river, the raft seems to take on a will of its own and bobs up and down dangerously. You realize it is attempting to capsize itself and throw you into the river. You may either trust your strength and luck to hold on or keep punting to the north side. Ugh. Or jump into the water and attempt to swim back to the south bank, which achieves nothing. You may either trust your strength and luck. Okay, we'll, we'll go for the luck. So it doesn't say do a uh, thing with luck at the moment, it just says if you trust it, go to this number. So I'm going there first, which was 55, yep, sorry, brain fart. 55, 55, 55, here you are. Roll two dice. If the total rolled is less than or equal to your luck, and uh, is also less than or equal to your stamina score, then you manage to hold on. Shit, so I need to get between 8 and a 12. I have to. Less than or equal your luck. Oh no, it just has to be less than luck. And less than stamina score. So I just need to get less than 12 is what you're telling me. That is a six, isn't it? Yeah, that's a six. It's not a nine. Okay. It's dead on what my luck is, which is an eight. Ugh. It's less than or equal to your luck. So I'm fine. I'm fine. Then you manage to hold on and maneuver the raft across and uh, raft across. Uh, North Bank, do, no, do, do, do not deduct a luck point. Oh, I was about to do that. Anyway, okay. Why won't it? That's great. You arrive safely, but as you step on the bank, the raft drifts away and makes its own way across the river to the south bank. Turn to seven. You are on the north bank of a fast-flowing river in a large underground cavern. Facing northwards, the rock face is smooth and glistening with moisture. Moss of many different hues grows on the surface. There is an eerie silence punctuated only by the splashings of the river as it flows behind you. You have three options. A passage runs off to the northwest, if you take this route, turn to 271. A large timber door is directly in front of you in the middle of the rock face, or what's the last option? Another passageway along the river eastward. I think I'm gonna try the timber door. You find yourself in a short, narrow passageway with a door ahead to the north. You try this door. The door squeaks open on rusty hinges. The room is dark and your eyes begin to adjust themselves as you close the door behind you. You hear a shuffling in the room, but before you can react, a blow to your head knocks you senseless. Lose two stamina points and turn to one, two, two. Bugger. So that's down to ten now. That's fun, isn't it? That's all the fun of the fed. Look at that massive zero. God, I'm good at this. Ooh, artwork. And that looks like I'm in trouble, doesn't it? They don't look friendly. They don't look friendly at all. Isn't that a barrel of fun? You awake with a throbbing head and look around. The room is about eight meters square with doors to the north and south. You have been dumped into the southwest corner. Standing motionless in the center of the room are four men. At least, they appear to be men. Their skin is a greeny gray color. Their clothes are tattered and torn and they are all staring vacantly at the ceiling. One carries a club, one a scythe, one an axe, and one a pick. They are ignoring you completely. Around the room are various peasant-style weapons, pitchforks, axe handles, pointed sticks, etc. One or two shields and several barrels. In the northeast corner is a human corpse with a sword in one hand and a shield in the other. You move your hand up to your head to feel for signs of blood, and you are relieved to find you are not bleeding. But as your hand moves, the strange creatures in the center of the room turn their eyes down towards you. Do you try to talk to them, jump to your feet and charge them with sword, 
scramble for an exit through the south door. You know what? I just realized when it was mentioned in shield, I had that enchanted shield and I never tried that sodding way of getting reduced damage, did I? With the, with the battle with the bats. Fuck springs to mind. I've lost more health than I uh, potentially could have done. There's nothing I can do about it now. We're carrying on. I uh, completely forgot. There's a lot to remember with these type of games, isn't it? And it takes long. I should apologise for the length of this video. I'm sure we won't live much longer, judging by the current circumstances. So, yeah. Anyway, what was it? Try to talk to them. Jump to your feet and charge them. Need a drink. Oh, yeah. Water. Great. Mmm. <sighs> Should we scramble for the exit? Because I feel like talking the corpses is is just stupid. Uh, charging them really should try and avoid another fight. I'm going to scramble for an exit. Scramble for an exit. This will either be a mistake or it won't. Basically. Your head hurts, and you feel dizzy as you rise to your feet. The four men stir into action and move towards you in single file with their weapons ready. You grope your way down the wall for the south door, but it will be touch and go whether you make it. Your foot slips on a loose pebble, and you fall to the ground. Before you can regain your footing, the creatures are upon you. The four creatures shuffling towards you are mindless zombies. Their vacant eyes suggest that their actions are controlled by a will which is not their own. You are still too dizzy to think properly, but you must act quickly. The first zombie reaches you and prepares to swing his club. You must fight him. Bugger. I was trying to avoid that. Well, at least I didn't lose any health in the trying to run away. So he is skill seven. His stamina is six. Okay. Really could have done without another fight before healing. So that sucks. His skill is only one down from mine. Okay, he gets three, eight, nine, ten. So he's got ten. Come on, I gotta basically just beat that. Well, I've beaten that, so he's gotten hit. Excellent. We need to try and lose as little health as possible. He now has four health. Four, right, okay, here we go again. Four. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I need to basically just get a six. Oh, and there it is. I've hit him again. I've hit him again. Okay. So, two. Right. So one more time. One more time. One more time! Oh, he's got a very high number there. Snake eyes! I've been hit. I've been hit, I've been hit, I've been hit. So I am now down eight health. Eight. Fuck. Another low number like that, please. Five. High number, high number! Six. Oh! So I just killed him. He's dead. That's him done. But now what? Oh, if you defeat the first zombie, add two luck points. So that's good. You know what? I forgot about that enchanted shield again. Fuck the enchanted shield. Fuck it. Just fuck it. Um. Add two luck points. That means I now have ten. Oh my god, I gotta go through the other three. I'm not gonna do this. It's not gonna happen. Unless I use that enchanted shield thing. Be back in a minute, I'm gonna see if I can find the page to reacquaint me with how that was done. Okay, I remember. If I get inflicted, I can roll a six. No, I can roll a one a single dice. If I get a six, I only get hit once. It's kind of tough to do though, so. And my luck is crap. So, here we go. Back to this again. 
At least it's not as tough as the first zombie, but still. Okay. Five. He's got 11. We'll beat 11. Well. Yep, did that. I can math. Can you see how quick I am with the math? Fuck you. I am generally dyslexic and I'm doing my best. You must be nice. So that gives him four. Oh, I picked the wrong thing. Well done, Windows Paint. <laughs> so dramatic. So dramatic. Fix that. Stupid looking for. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Keep that battle music going. Free for him. That's good. More of that, please. That's one for me. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. So now he's down to two. I need one more win like that, and he's dead at least. Oh, shit. I've just given him a nine on top of that. So he's got 15. Just, just, just beat him. He's dead. But then there's the zombie with the pick, which has the exact same sod in skill and stamina. I'm amazed I killed one without getting too destroyed, if I'm honest with you. Jesus. Okay. Come on. Oh, I've given him 10 to 16. I need to beat 16. Fuck. He got that hit in. So I'm going to try and roll for a six. Ah, so he still does me for two. Okay. That's now six. Okay. Okay. Low number. Oh, bloody hell. 17. And, yeah, just under. So he's just hit me again. Fuck. I can now get hit twice more. And the game is over. Okay. Three. Good. Now, roll a 38. Fuck. No, wait. That That's a... Uh... That's a draw then, isn't it? But three got two. No, sorry. I just beat him. I'm being thick. I just beat him by one point. Okay. You will have to bear with me sometimes when it comes to math. I should be doing this with a calculator. I'm so fucking stupid. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Four for him. Meaning he's got ten. Oh... So that's a draw. Okay. Oh, fuck me. That, that's... That's a bad. Okay. One hit. When I got like one and a half zombies left to kill. I should have rolled the six just then. Should we do it now quickly? There you are. Did I get a six? No, so it doesn't matter. Low number. Four. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I hit him. I hit him. He's got one blip of health. As have I. Who wins? Six with six, that means his is 12. I need to beat 12. I beat 12. I killed him. Unbelievably so. Actually, it doesn't fucking matter. It's a cross throw, that one. Last one is a six and a five. So he has lower health, but it's by one point. So it doesn't fucking matter. <sighs> doesn't matter. That's a terrible looking six. That doesn't even look like a six. It looks like a zero. Fuck you, Windows Paint. Huh? Eh, eh, eh. And five. Absolutely irrelevant. Okay. 
will I kill the final zombie. It has to be a flawless victory. Snake eyes. Good. That's clearly higher than that. I'm not even going to math it. Not even going to math it. So, oh, I've still got the wrong thing. Um, three. <sighs> low number, low number, low number, low number. Three. If his six, let's beat that. Ten. Oh, ho, ho. it's going to be down to one roll of the dice as to whether we carry on or not. Okay. Okay. Shit. He has 14. I have. Just. Just beaten him. I killed all four zombies. And I'm one hit away from death. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. If you defeat all four, turn to 115. Where something effing marvellous had better happen. <laughs> oh. <sighs> the poor wretches lying dead at your feet almost look happy to be relieved of the burden of life. But as you look down at them, you sense that you are not the only one to know of their deaths. Looking around the room, you may investigate the weapons lying around Go over to the dead body in the northeast corner or check the barrels. I'm very, very fucking dead. So, going over to the dead body sounds like insta death. If I get a better weapon, it doesn't matter because I still got to swing perfectly with it. Hang on a minute, I have a potion of strength. I know you can only use provisions where you're at a resting point. When can you use the potion? Um, just let me check that in the rules again quickly to make sure. Oh! Oh! These potions can be taken at any time during the adventure. Taking a measure of a potion will restore skill, stamina, or luck. Scores in a little, 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 little. Um, how much? The potion of fortune will increase. I don't give a fuck. Um... Potion of strength restores stamina points. How many? I know I can only use the potion twice, but how many um, health points does it give me? Oh, it gives you full health. Oh, right, okay, right, so that's, um, if we put one left, just as a reminder, I'm just writing it as quick as I can. My health, I believe, was 17 to begin with. Thank fuck, I remembered that. We're back in it. We are back in it. I thought that was it. I thought this quest is about to end. I still never found any gold. Ah, <laughs> oh, wow. I thought that was it. I mean, we've been going for an hour and a half. Uh, that's obviously going to be edited down a bit, but it's been recording for an hour and a half. This video is going to be a sod to put together. Okay. So anyway, we're full health now. But we can investigate the weapon line weapons line around. They were all uh, farmers ones, weren't they? So who gives a shit? Go over to the dead body in the northeast corner. We'll check the barrels. I am going to check the barrels, because maybe they've got gold in them. The barrels contain a clear brown liquid. You sniff it. It smells like rum! You taste it. It is rum! <laughs> you cup your hands, pour some in, and take a swig. You gasp, by golly, it's good. Restore six points of stamina and one luck. You fucking cunt, I've just used a potion. <laughs> Everything I 
I do! Everything I do! Every time I think I'm doing good, something gives me the finger. First it was the fucking sword that turned into a floppy, and now it's the bloody healing. <laughs> you shit. I cannot believe how even me picking the thing, the book just goes... Sticks, don't believe it. Don't believe it. Okay. I hate you. And luck, I don't think our luck ever dropped. It went up. And it can't go past that. Because this is a restore. So, nothing happens with luck. Fuck all happens with my elf. Ah! A noise startles you. Prompting you to leave the room quickly. You walk up to investigate the north door. The door opens and you find yourself in a dark crypt of some kind. The room is very large. At one end is an altar, and various coffins are strewn about the room. There is a door behind you in a south wall, and also one in the west wall. If you want to investigate the room further, turn to 254. If the place gives you the creeps, you can leave via the west door. I've just dealt with four zombies and got past it, but it's going to be teeth. So I'm not going to try that kind of shit again. Um. If the place gives you the creeps, you can leave via the west door. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. You're in a narrow east-west corridor. Looking westwards, you can see a crossroads ahead. You can go on to the crossroads. Turn to 37. That was almost pointless, wasn't it? Standing at the crossroads, you may go either north, west, or south. I don't know. So I'm just going to go north, I guess. Oh, some of these corridor ones, you just feel like, why is there so much of this. That's a little repetitive. But then again, I suppose you got to remember, this was the first fighting fantasy book. There's going to be a few things that were improved upon, and I bet that was one of them. You are following a passageway which leads ahead to the north. After several meters, it bends sharply to the east. You continue eastwards until you eventually come across a narrow opening in the north wall. You may go through this opening, or continue eastwards. I don't know. I don't know try the opening I guess let's try that you climb through the opening and find yourself at the top of a narrow staircase leading downwards cautiously you descend the stairs the narrow staircase is cut into the rock and there are about 20 steps leading down at the bottom of the steps a passageway leads you into a large open chamber this chamber stinks of putrefying flesh the smell is so bad that you are tempted to turn back Three bodies lie in the chamber. You may either search the bodies or tiptoe quietly through the room. What will you do? Sounds a bit deathy. I could search them, but I get the feeling one of the buggers would get up. And then if one of the buggers get up, they all get up. And then I've got three fucking zombies again. Am I now scared of zombies? Muchly. Tiptoe through the room. That probably won't work either. This is one of them shit options only type deals, isn't it? I can just sense it. You tiptoe through the room, up a narrow staircase, ending up at the top of the stairs in a passage. That was easy, you think. And you begin to have second thoughts about whether it would have been worthwhile to search the bodies. If you want to return and search the bodies... No. No. Alright? No. At the top of the stairs, the passage turns sharply to the east. As you pause to get your bearings, you hear a creaking in the rock behind you. You spin round in time to see a heavy port pot It's one of them again. Portcullis. Portcullis. Drop to seal off the passageway behind you. Your only way now is forward. You may either press on forward, turn to 48, or may check the walls for secret passages. I'm just going to go forward. You are in an east-west corridor. If you go east, you will turn a corner northwards. To go this way, turn to 391. Or go west, but whatever. I'm going east slash northwards. It's, I don't know. 391. You're at the south end of a north-south corridor. North-south corridor. Okay. Confusion. Looking northwards, you can see a passage coming off from the east wall. Do you want to... Go up to this passage, check for secret passages as you walk northwards. Go to go south following a bend to the west. Um, let's go to this passage, I guess. 
right now I feel like the book is sending me back and forth to the end of the book, to the front of the book, the end of the book, front of the book. And I'm getting a bit confuzzled. It must be because we've been doing it for such a while. You walk westwards for some time, then north round a peculiar bend, which hairpins straight round to the south. Eventually you wind up at a three-way junction. And this proves it. You are at a three-way junction. Do you want to go north, east, or south? I, d I don't know. One's as good as the other, in my opinion, right now. North, then. You walk up a long corridor, round a sharp hairpin bend. Have I not done that? Finally along an east-west corridor, eastwards to a crossroads, turn 85. Have I read that? Or am I uh, uh, I don't oh, my mind is just melting right now. You're at a crossroads. Fuck it, I shit you not. Look. Look. To go north, to go south, to go east, to go west. These sort of choices are frivolous pointlessness. They must have buying this kind of crap out with the uh, newer books. Because that's just like, I'm going here, I'm going there, I'm going here, I'm going there. Look, can I get anything? I'm going north again now. I'm going to keep going north until something happens. Because I feel like I'm kind of stuck in a rut right now. 106. Okay. Right. The passageway ahead runs northward for some time. You may rest along the passage to eat provisions. Oh, well, my health's full, as we well know. So that's irrelevant. Piece of shit. I did waste one of them potion swigs badly, didn't I? Uh, it then bends to the west and begins to get quite narrow. You reach a small, rocky arch, which you will have to stoop to get through. On the other side of the arch, you pause and look around. You are in a large cavern, which disappears into distant blackness. The cavern is partially lit by a natural light which streams in through a hole in the roof. You cannot see a way through. As you shine your lantern around the cavern, you hear a rumble. A dull glow flickers in the blackness. Suddenly, a jet of fire shoots from the depths of the cavern, narrowly missing you and singeing the mossy growths on the wall. You throw yourself onto the ground and look up to see a large dragon stalking out of the darkness towards you. Smoke curls from its nostrils. Its scaly red skin glistens with an oily covering. The beast is some 15 meters long. How, how will you attack the creature? That's an option. Look at that there. There's our dragon, I have to say, looks a bit derp compared to the one on the front cover. I mean, look, you've got Derposaurus Rex compared to, oh shit, I'm doomed. Those are your options. But they're not, are they? My options are, draw your sword and prepare to attack. Search your memory for another means of attack. My memory? That's not an option. Draw your sword and prepare to attack. Search your memory for another means of attack. What do you mean, search my memory? I haven't, I haven't come across anything that could help fight this bastard. Going north all this time was a bad idea. Uh, draw your, I, I think I have to draw my sword. I think I have to draw my fucking sword. I could cheat right now and check the other one. Because this isn't going to end well. Dragon. Let's see the dragon's skill. You ready? Uh huh. I have more health than him, but he has a much higher chance of landing a hit. Okay, put the book down there for a minute. Here we go. I'm fighting a dragon with a butter knife. Because the rubber knife was a piece of shit. Not that it would have helped all that much. Okay, low numbers. Eight is not low. Okay, so he's got 18. I have to beat 18. Meaning I have to roll a 10 minimum. Fuck. Rolled a 10. Good. So that that's... Yeah, that with my eight means we both got 18 so that's a nothing that one's void nothing happens i believe um okay next low number oh 19 i'm in trouble 
Yes, he hit me and he hit me fucking hard. Ow. I'm gonna roll a six. Roll a six, so it only hurts once. Shit me! I got a six, meaning that is now only damaged a bit. Thanks to the enchanted shield, I am only knocked down to 16. Who'd have saw that coming? Fucking no one. Right, okay. I still really need to hurt this bastard. Oh, I got a two. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Come on, 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 come
Oh, he's hit us. He's hit us. Okay. We're now at eight. We are at eight. Come on. No number. Snake eye. Sack of fucking shit. I can't beat 12. Even if I get that, then he's he's hit me, basically. There's not even a point rolling my one. I will see if I can roll a six. Funny looking six. Right. Speaking of six. Shit. Come on. Come on, you fucking bastard. on so unbelievably close to just killing a dragon what's that 10 I have to roll a perfect double six funny looking double six right this is it this is how it will end This needs to be a low number or it's game over. Come on. Oh. I have to beat 19. I got 19 as well. We're in it for another roll. All right, another one. Build up. Suspension. Low number. Seven. So he's got 17. Still too much. Stop giving him one of these dice. Is this a cunt? <laughs> one of these dice. I don't know. Plural. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are dead. <laughs> Warlock of Firetop Mountain. I tell you what, though. I made it to the dragon. And we lasted a hell of a lot longer than I thought we would. This, this video is going to be long. This is going to take me ages to edit. Got all the way to the dragon. And I nearly, nearly beat him. He had two HP. One hit was all I needed. And I didn't get it. I lost. Fuck. Well, that's that. I'm sure there was a thing to do with gold that still baffles me because it just doesn't offer the information. That really irritates me, the gold bit. Um, when it comes to luck in battle, I think you can use luck in battle sometimes, but you don't have to, so... I don't feel like I was being an idiot but not by not using it. Maybe you could say I was playing the game in hard mode. I keep saying game. It's a book game. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video of the Warlock the Firetop Mountain, fighting fantasy. I had a lot of fun. The video is going to be a sod to put together, but I've had a lot of fun. If you did enjoy it, click like, comment, subscribe. If you found yourself listening to this rather than watching it, let me know, because a few people have said they have um, audio books that they listen to, and they found this more entertaining to listen to than that for some of them. Or more on the entertaining side of things, I guess. Whatever. Again, thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.